Hey, good morning. My name is Art Acevedo. I'm the Chief of Police here in Austin, Texas. I want to welcome you all uh, here this morning, and most importantly, I want to thank you for your patience. This morning, we, we uh, plan on giving you an update on the status of this investigation. Uh, I will open up the press conference followed by uh, President Penves and then uh, Chief Carter. Uh, but first and foremost, I want to express my condolences to Haruka's family. I have uh, talked, I have spoken with the family, her mother and father. It, uh, no, no parent should ever have to bury a child, uh, especially a beautiful young woman like Haruka with such a beautiful spirit. Uh, but what we promised them early on uh, as a community, the University of Texas, the University of Texas Police Department, the Austin Police Department, and the Department of Public Safety, is that we would leave no stone unturned to provide them with the justice they so richly deserve. And this morning, we're going to talk about delivering just that. As you all know, uh, Haruka Weiser, date of birth 620 of 1997, uh, was taken from us. Uh, first and foremost, the reason that this case has been cracked is because we in the city of Austin, which is the fastest growing city in the country with a very lean police department, are blessed to work and serve a community that is engaged, involved, and willing to stand up for their neighbors, that cooperate with the police department, and they are willing to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. So I want to thank the people of Austin for all the tips that have come in that really made this case break so early on. Around 4 p.m. yesterday, Austin Fire Department Station 3 reported that their firefighters on 4416 responded, which was Monday, to the 2900 block of Medical Arts Street, which is near here, for a trash fire. Fortunately for us, the University of Texas, which is one of the safest universities, as you know, uh, this campus has not had a, a homicide on this campus since 1966. That is a tremendous long period of time, and I think it's a record of safety that is somewhat like the city of Austin and envy that we can all be envious of. When we released that videotape that this, the, this university provided us, because they've invested in a very robust security system with many cameras around uh, this campus and in the community surrounding the campus, the firefighters realized that on Monday they responded to a call at that location and that the, in, the individual they were seeing on that video strongly resembled the suspect uh, that we were looking for. Uh, Fire Station 3 in the Austin Fire Department, uh, thanks to their vigilance, reported their, uh, uh, their observations to the police department and our homicide division immediately went to work on this case and on this suspect. The other person that was really key in this, and the other tip that was really key in this, was a female that we will not identify today, but we will identify later, member of our community that actually called in the fire. And it, once again, here's a woman that called in that fire Monday, then after the video provided by the University of Texas was released, connected the dots, and immediately also called in the tip saying, uh, that resembles the young man that started a fire on Monday. So later on, we will identify her, but she was key as well. As a result of this, we've identified a suspect named Michael, uh, Mikhail is the way he pronounces it, spelled M as in Mary, E-E-C-H-A-I-E-L. Last name of Kreiner, C-R-I-N-E-R. -E He's a black male with a date of birth of 630 of 1998. AP, uh, AFD, uh, APD responded on the day of the fire this past Monday and transported the suspect, Suspect Kreiner, to LifeWorks in order to provide him temporary shelter for he was determined to be a homeless 17-year-old young man. The subject was also in possession of a woman's bike. AFD on Monday took possession of that bike for safekeeping. As soon as AFD called us, APD homicide detectives reviewed the in-car video from the police department in-car camera and realized that the subject was wearing similar pants and shoes and fit the general description, physical description of the sus suspect. Also, the suspect had in his possession 
a small blue duffel bag resembling that of our victim, Haruka Weiser. APD responded to fire station number three and the bike in their possession resembled again that of the suspect. APD also responded to the fire scene and located the trash container which contained several items which we believe to be belong to our victim. APD then responded to the suspect uh, location, last known location as LifeWorks and he was able to be, we were able to detain him for tampering with evidence and question him regarding this incident. Uh, Mikhail, Mikhail Kreiner has been booked into the Travis County Jail for a murder, for a charge of murder, which is a first degree felony. This charge will be filed formally later this afternoon. It's important for folks to realize that uh, this investigation is absolutely very active. We're nowhere near complete but it's also very important for this community to realize that we are uh, very certain that the subject we have in custody, the suspect is in custody, is the suspect responsible for the death of this beautiful young woman. Uh, a lot of parents are calling and asking, our, is, our, is our community safe, are our students safe? And again, I will tell you that the city of Austin is the second safest big city in the, in the United States. It is an extremely safe city. Having said that, Young people, please, as, as the parents of our beautiful victim said, let's take some lessons that we can learn and always be vigilant, no matter how safe an environment is. Uh, we need to be vigilant. You know, young people love to be on their iPhones, their iPads, their iPods. Uh, it's really important to just be very, very vigilant when you're out there because unfortunately we know that there are monsters in society that would do us harm. Um, the last thing I will say is that if you are a witness, if you recognize this suspect when we release his photo later on this, uh, this, uh, this afternoon, uh, if you remember seeing him anywhere, we want to trace his activities leading up not just to this crime, but leading up to the day he was actually captured at LifeWorks. Please contact the Austin Police Department. Again, the investigation is very active and, and again ongoing. Lastly, I want to share a message uh, from uh, her parents, specifically her mom. She told me in closing the conversation with me a, 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 about an hour and a half ago, she said, Chief, would you do something for me? And I said, yes, ma'am, what, what would you like me to do? And she said, please tell all your officers, please tell everyone at the University of Texas, please tell everyone involved in this investigation, thank you. But also please tell them to take care of themselves and uh, go home and hug your children, not once, but twice. So I didn't get the privilege of meeting this young woman, but I wanna say that having spoken to their mother, that whoever she touched, it was a blessing. And I'm just glad and thankful that we're gonna bring justice to that family and that we're going to restore the sense of safety that this campus and this community has always enjoyed. And I look forward to, in her honor, continue to work with you, Mr. President, to keep the University of Texas one of the safest in the nation, as is our city. And before I open it to questions, I will now call up to uh, President Fenvis. Uh, well, thank you, Chief Acevedo. It's, uh, it really is an impressive work and collaboration among law enforcement agencies, uh, Austin Police Department, uh, the Homicide Unit, uh, Chief Gay, thank you. Uh, Chief Carter and the University of Texas Police Department and uh, uh, quickly uh, identifying, locating, uh, locating um, the victim, our, our dear student, and of course the Department of Public Safety and the support and active engagement that they provided. Uh, thank you for your outstanding and rapid work in identifying and apprehending a suspect in this horrific crime. Uh, as you heard, uh, the police and prosecutors have, still have much to do in order to bring uh, justice, uh, but the announcement this morning is an important development and it's a direct result of the outstanding police work and brings a tremendous sense of relief to our students, our faculty, our staff, and the entire University of Texas community. However, it is important that we remain focused on offering support to Haruka's parents. Uh, I, met, uh, I met them last evening. 
after the uh, vigil on the East Mall. Uh, I can't imagine a more heroic, uh, courageous, and strong family under circumstances uh, that no family should ever have to face. The university will continue to stand with Haruka's family. Uh, we will help them however we can uh, to honor Haruka's life and what she stood for and to make her death an occasion to look at the safety of our community and others and to find some meaning behind an otherwise meaningless and senseless death. As I said yesterday, our students expect to be safe. And as we talked about yesterday, we are taking measures and doing everything we can to improve the safety of the campus. Uh, the increased patrols that I directed earlier this week will continue for now. And I will be getting regular updates from law enforcement as the prosecution of the case continues. And the University of Texas Police Chief David Carter and others will work with DPS uh, to assess campus safety and security in a very comprehensive manner and we will take this as an occasion to do as Haruka's parents asked us to do, uh, learn from this and make this a better community and a safer community for every member of it. Uh, Chief Carter. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning. Um, first off, I'd like to also uh, extend my condolences again to Haruka's family. Uh, obviously, this is a devastating loss for the UT community, as President Finves has already indicated earlier this week. And it's clearly troubling for UTPD as well, but I, I really want to stress the importance of law enforcement partnerships. Uh, what you see here today is, is uh, what this city, what this metropolitan area needs. We have APD as well as DPS working well together with UTPD. Uh, there, are, there are numerous areas that we have worked we will be focusing on and looking uh, as we move forward uh, to look at this uh, in, in a holistic way, uh, understanding that we are obviously taking this to heart as a police department. Uh, our role is to keep our campus safe. Uh, matter of fact, the UTPD's motto basically is protecting those who will change the world. We mean that. We believe this is a safe campus, however, this tragic incident has us redoubling our efforts, working with our law enforcement partners moving forward to find out are there areas that we can improve upon. There are three areas that I want to talk about that are very important to any police department, but especially UTPD at this time. As the president has indicated and directed, we will be looking uh, closely at our physical environment here, working very closely with DPS to help us assess our campus in terms of its physical environment, it's uh, security protocols, and that's ongoing. We'll talk more about that in the future. Uh, also, the things that are very important for any police department to do, and UTPD is doing this currently, and has been doing for the past year, is to actively look for any potential threats to our campus community. Obviously, uh, in this particular case, we did not catch this young man or identify him prior to this. We recognize that. It's important to recognize that we are working closely with APD and going beyond our campus boundaries now. We understand that there are areas of concern uh, west of campus, and that is something that we work with APD frequently on. We actively patrol that. We're going to redouble our efforts on that. It's very important to recognize that we're not singling out any one group of people, but we need to address threats wherever they might be found. Thirdly, and also is important. In this particular case, as Chief Office Acevedo has indicated to you, not only do, is it important for UTPD to share information with our community, it's important for our community to share information with the police, whether it's APD or UTPD. In any case, any suspicious activity or information, we want to know about it so that we can properly respond to that. The campus continues to grieve. Yes, we feel better that the suspect is in custody, but we continue to grieve. We'll have to continue to work with our community, on, working on ongoing projects 
and talking and listening. We need your support. Uh, we thank everybody's support uh, in this particular issue. As I mentioned, there are things that are important for the police to do, but there are things that are important for our students to remember and recall. The issue is go to our Be Safe, Live Safe website and remember those simple things. I know you've heard them many, many times. The issue of, of uh, being conscious of your surroundings, not necessarily walking at night uh, alone, not necessarily walking with, uh, while texting or being distracted in an environment that you're not familiar with or comfortable with. The point is we really believe we have a safe campus and a community, but it requires the community to step up and do its part as well. And I'm talking to our student population, I'm talking to our staff, faculty and staff. We're here for you, we'll work through this, we'll get through this grieving process and move forward. And with that, I guess we'll open it up for questions. You know, I, I, I don't think that you uh, have any clue what the motive is. I don't have a clue what the motive is. I can just tell you that when, when you think about what, what connects us as human beings to murder a, a young woman just is, uh, is not part of my DNA, and thankfully it's not part of most people's DNA. Uh, I, I did forget to do one thing. I wanted to uh, commend uh, Assistant Chief Tor Gay, <clears throat> who's over our Violent Crimes Division, for his fantastic leadership and his entire uh, team for all the great work and uh, Commander Ortiz from DPS. Uh, Chief uh, talked about it, Carter, the President talked about it. We're very fortunate that we don't worry about jurisdiction here, we worry about results. And uh, when we all came together, we came together as a family to get results for this community, but more importantly for the parents of a, and, and uh, siblings of a beautiful young woman that was taken. But we don't know what the, uh, the, uh, the, the actual motive was uh, at some point. We hope to determine that. And obviously as the investigation continues, we anticipate there'll be further charges uh, filed on the suspect. There are no known relationships to UT that we've been able to determine at this time. He is not a student, and we don't believe that there is any uh, relationship with UT. In terms of his criminal history, that's something that we're working on to uh, uh, get a, a thorough uh, look at exactly what this man's history, this young man's history has been. He was taken to Life Works by the Austin Police Department after the fire on Monday, and uh, that's part of our investigation. Again, uh, I mentioned it earlier, and I'm going to mention it again. It's very important that people, once we release a really good photo of him, booking photo of him sometime today, it's important that those that have had contact with him, whether it was yesterday, the day before, a week, a month, we want to be able to uh, go back and look at this young man's entire history. Uh, we're not going to comment on that. He was arrested yesterday, uh, and he's been booked for murder. Chief. Question for Chief Carter. If this individual is homeless on campus, can you speak to all, is there a problem with homeless people on campus? Have you identified places where they may hang out or even in buildings where they have access to? So one of the things that we, we currently do, and as I think the, uh, the press is clearly aware, there have been times when we've had uh, members of the homeless community come on campus that didn't have a need to be here or any business interest. If we identify people such as that, we respond immediately and, and we'll actually escort them off campus if that's required. In terms of uh, is there a large population of homeless on campus, uh, no, we do not believe that. However, we're in close proximity. We're in the, we're in the middle of a major metropolitan area with a somewhat of a significant homeless population, especially just to our west off campus, and that's why we're doing those joint patrols with APD, uh, focusing on those kinds of issues. To my knowledge, not at this time. Um, so we're looking obviously at videos in terms of when we you know, uh, see the actual photographs of him, we'll take a look at him. But to uh, my understanding, he's not been in the Austin area very long. Sh 
she she called in the actual uh, fire and she actually saw the suspect and she actually uh, after seeing the video that we released from the tape from the University of Texas actually called in and said I believe this is my guy. Excuse me one second. Let me go over here to go ahead. He was he was he was detained and arrested without incident. Well, we're not going to provide details on that because it's part of the ongoing investigation. You know, although people really want to know all the details, I think our number one responsibility is to a family that's lost a daughter. And it's, it would be irresponsible of us to release, prematurely release details of an investigation that uh, there's only two people that know definitively what happened uh, other than obviously the investigators and the medical examiner, and that is the suspect and the victim. And so. Uh, we would we would we would be uh, remiss if we started talking about specifics. One more question. Yes. 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 Well, one of them is a backpack believed to be hers, and uh, and uh, some other personal items believed to be hers. So I can tell you that uh, again, with a a high degree of certainty and confidence that we have uh, a, a, the suspect responsible for her murder. So again, uh, I just want to close by saying again and emphasizing this is a safe campus, it's a safe community. Uh, we're bringing up homeless issues. We know that homelessness is a, an issue that impacts every major city in this country. It's not unique to Austin. Every major city, I'm from Los Angeles. We had issues there. I can name any city, it's a challenge. And homelessness is not a crime. Uh, and we in the Austin Police Department, we will continue to focus on behavior and not on socioeconomic standing. And we look forward to working with the president and with UT. Uh, there will be more information released uh, as it becomes available. Thank you all for being here.